Hello, everyone. This is the Faithful Life Podcast. I'm Matt Jacobson of FaithfulMan.com. And I'm Lisa Jacobson of Club31Women.com. We're so glad you're here with us. At Faithful Life, we explore what it means to be a biblical Christian in today's world, in our marriage, parenting, church, and culture. It's real, raw, and relevant. So let's get started. Welcome back to the podcast. Hello, everyone. Absolutely. So today we're going to be talking about affirmation, speaking positive words of affirmation into each other's lives. I'm really looking forward to this episode. I think it's going to be really good. But before we dive in, we did just want to thank everyone who's left reviews for us and on the podcast. It's been very encouraging. And if you have been enjoying our podcast and you haven't left a review, we'd be grateful if you did. It makes a big difference in helping to get the word out. So if you've enjoyed it, leave five stars and write something. We read every word that uh, that you've all written, and it's been a, a really big encouragement to us. Love those written reviews. Absolutely. So today we're talking about the subject of affirmation. What we say has such incredible power, and frankly, mm-hmm. it has power on both sides of the scale, right. positive and negative. But on the positive side, it doesn't matter who it comes from. It just lifts us up. If it's a boss at work saying something positive and encouraging to us, if it's a friend who genuinely appreciates us, we just love hearing those words. How about a sibling speaking, uh, celebrating a victory in the life of your brother? It's so funny. Like I can remember exact words that have been spoken to me from like third grade. I mean, I I literally, can't you like, don't you have, I mean, both negative, unfortunately, those are powerful. Those are still, you know, be harmful. Mm -hmm. And but even those 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 few positive things that a teacher said to me, or a parent, or a, uh, you know a friend, like they 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 last for decades. They certainly do. Today we're really talking about those words of affirmation in the familial relationships mm-hmm. in your in, home, in your home with mm-hmm. your children, mm-hmm. with your spouse, or your husband, or your wife. So they're powerful. We want to start off just recognizing and remembering words of affirmation can be so powerful. The Bible actually talks quite a bit about our words and the power it has. For instance, in Ephesians 4.29, it says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, come out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And I just love that phrase in particular, that I carry with me the idea that I can minister grace to the people around me. That's just Mm -hmm. a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. Um, Proverbs also talks a ton about the power of our words. And uh, for instance, Proverbs 18, 21 says, tongue has the power of life and death. I mean, that it couldn't be more simply put, the the extreme that your words have, you know, the impact they can have. I think we tend to discount the power and the value of speaking positively mm-hmm. into the lives of others. Mm-hmm. And it, it tends to be the things that are out of place or the things that aren't right or the things that need addressing that we often focus on, I, yeah. you know, we, we want to fix things. We want to make things better. We want to address something in our kids. We want to point out something our spouse isn't doing. And frankly, noticing the negative instead of the positive, this reminds me of a story about me. <laughs> Imagine that, <laughs> I, honey. You know what? I hate <laughs> to tell on myself, but I feel compelled to. Either you or me, babe. Right, exactly. <laughs> if I don't tell this story, maybe you will. But, but this just reminds me on, frankly, the negative side mm-hmm. of uh, just something that I did in the past. It's just become this iconic story of what not to do uh, with your spouse, at least in our relationship and yeah. ministries online, club31women.com, yes. faithfulman.com. We've written about this, or certainly I have. But I remember one day, well, I should just lay out the scene, first of all. I'll just, I'll just tell you what was going on in the home. So I was away at work. Mm-hmm. Lisa was home. This was in the heavy lifting years. We had lots of young kids, eight kids in total, for those of you who don't know, but lots of young kids. So anybody who has kids knows that kids bring a degree of disorder and chaos, right? Really? Yeah, right. Exactly. Right. <laughs> Revelation time. So that the, Lisa's at home with the kids and mm-hmm. the house is in perfect order. Well, she I don't had, know if it was perfect. Oh, it but... was perfect. You had cleaned... <laughs> Well, no, it wasn't perfect because I found the one thing, but we're going to tell, <laughs> okay. we're going to, okay. we're going to comment on that later. So the, the house was perfectly clean. The kids were just quite, several of them had been bathed. Everybody was quiet. Everybody was just in their corner doing something or with each other. And it was just a very peaceful scene. Lisa had just finished baking eight loaves of bread. The smell of <laughs> Lisa's bread was wafting through the house. And by the way, so I just want to say a picture say, you're painting, little tangential comment here. Anybody 
who is half interested in bread, you should go and get Lisa. It's on your website, isn't it? You, yeah, it's, it is somewhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Lisa's, uh, uh, her recipe for wheat bread, it is the absolute, it's like you're eating okay, clouds. Okay. It's <laughs> so good. Anyway. Honestly, she makes the best wheat bread on earth. All right, so there were eight <laughs> loaves of that. I'll take that as word of affirmation. On, <laughs> there you go. Eight loaves of bread just come out of the oven. The whole house smells like fresh baked bread. And she's standing at the stove, and she is making an amazing dinner. Okay, so that's the scene that I walk into. And I walk into the front door, and I look around the room, and I look under the couch, and I said, uh, hey, who left the pair of socks under the couch? True story. I, <laughs> I know, it's kind of sad. We laugh right now. Yes, but, I wasn't but, laughing that day. No, no, you kind of have to laugh to keep from crying, I think. <laughs> Because it was terrible. It was just awful. This, the, just noticing the negative instead of luxuriating, just entering to, into celebrating the positive. I just think that's something that we're prone to and need to, at least I am. I wonder if anybody else out there is like that, right? <laughs> you might you be notice the, the things that, uh, that the, the one thing in this case, it's so embarrassing. It's so extreme in that circumstance. But it is like life a lot of the time. We notice things that need to be fixed not the things that are wonderful and that we need to celebrate. And, you know, you talked about noticing. So you notice the, the socks under the couch. Does anybody else have couch, socks under their couches? Because it seems to be a trend in our home. But you can actually, if you flip your thinking, you can start noticing that the right things that someone mm. does or the good things. And that is a game changer in your home. If you're able to switch that around and look for those simple, obvious things of something good, something right, something beautiful. It's not rocket science. No, it's actually very simple just to speak those words. Our lives, our homes are filled with opportunities and circumstances and character qualities and traits and achievements to celebrate, to lift up, to be affirming about. So actually, you know, I know you just told the true story of, of the socks under the couch, but a few years later, something else happened. And this wasn't all that long ago, because um, I remember very clearly it was a similar day where I had lots going on and it was come towards that dinner hour. So I had something on the stove and I was keeping the laundry moving. So I'm back and forth from kitchen laundry, kitchen laundry, kitchen laundry. And you were sitting in the, on the couch with your computer doing some work and you were watching me. I could feel you watching me. And then you, um, you finally stopped me and you said, you are amazing. And I was feeling quite flustered and kind of sweaty so I didn't feel very amazing at all and you said you do know that don't you you know and I just said to you I said I don't I don't feel amazing in the least and then you went on you were you mentioned specific things that you had observed about me that you appreciate about me and frankly a few things that I didn't even know you'd noticed and boy did it just change everything for me in terms of my heart my perspective and gave me this like just put wind in my sails for all the things that I was deep in the middle of doing mm. so they have well, they're very powerful yeah they are and you know i hope the guys are really listening out there mm -hmm. because if lisa is any indication women have they often have the feeling that life is coming at them with mm -hmm. the speed of a fighter jet and the chaos of a riot <laughs> yes yes that's a good way to put it you know and you add to that the voices mm -hmm. everywhere around your wife that is saying in subtle and maybe not so subtle ways that uh, the job you're doing just isn't quite up to the mark Wives mm. often have that nagging feeling that they just don't measure up. I think that's the message, generally speaking, of culture and society. Yeah, I think women f tend toward that anyway, that feeling of not measuring up and feeling overwhelmed. But I, in the age that we live in now with social media, Pinterest, celebrities, all of that, you, you look at all these different pieces, all that this woman's accomplishing that and this woman's amazing there and she looks this way. It's all the stuff you're not, right? Yeah. Oh, it just, it, it already just message. drives that's home what you're already yeah. feeling. So yeah, I think that's really true. It's a big, it's a big uh, struggle for women, for myself. So guys, let's drown out those mm -hmm. voices with the applause of affirmation. That's what affirmation is. It's like standing up and cheering for the other person in that moment. That's what we can do. Words of beauty, truth, words of love that our wife wants to hear. She wants to hear these things. But you know something more importantly than that? What? She needs to hear them. Mm, yes. Yeah. No, I, I, I do need to hear those words. And I need to hear them and knowing that you mean them from your heart, that that's that's really coming for you. So it's not so much like, oh, you look nice today. That that doesn't really put wind in my sails. But but when I walk by and you say something like, you are so beautiful, like that just, 
It's nice to hear. Well, I think all of us, husbands and wives, have a very refined uh, uh, insincerity meter, right? Mm. So we know when it's coming from the heart. Yeah. And, and words of affirmation have got to come from the heart to be powerful, to have that uplifting uh, power for your spouse's spirit. Got to got to be sincere. Yeah, it doesn't have to be fancy or elegant. It the it can be very simply spoken. The the main thing is to have it come from your heart. And if you grew up in a home that didn't practice this kind of talking, and it feels almost like you can't, you want to speak words of affirmation into your to your family to into your marriage, but you're just uncomfortable. Feels awkward. You don't know what to say. Then then that's okay. So you got to start somewhere. And you can actually practice and get better at it. But just pick out one thing that you appreciate about your child or your husband and just say it. Just say, I appreciate about this. I admire this in you. Mm -hmm. Well, did you come by this naturally? No, I didn't actually. It was a very, I just remember the, I literally remember first it started with our children. I started, I knew that I needed to speak words of life into them. I, I felt it down to my toes that I needed to do this. But I just remember the first time just saying it, it almost sounded like I was afraid I was going to get called out for being insincere. Yes, or hypocrite or or a wannabe. Mm. I don't know why. I was so insecure about it with my own little kids even. But I finally just said, hey, you did a great job. And I just watched watched her blossom right in front of my eyes Mm -hmm. by acknowledging that, Mm -hmm. just that simple way. And I just thought, well, look at that. I can do this. Well, and the thing is, is that the impact of words of affirmation is so outsized compared to Mm. the little effort that it takes. I think one of the barriers to actually speaking these things is we somehow think we have to commit an act of international affirmation. (laughs) Right. It's like we have to prepare to go there. A speech. And it's just not Mm. like that. The Mm -hmm. fact of the matter is, is that our lives are filled with blessings. Our spouse is a massive blessing to us in many, many ways. Our kids are blessings to us in many, many ways. Our lives are filled with wonderful good things because of the people that are in them. Mm -hmm. And whether it's an accomplishment, whether it's a trait that you really appreciate about that person, an act of kindness that person did toward you or does for you on a regular basis, all you have to do is pick out one of those things and say something about it. A lot of us have feelings that are really positive, right? We feel deeply about something, but it's not meaningful for life and affirmation in the life of the other person if we don't say it. So we thought it would be good, maybe just in this moment, to just affirm each other. Let's just say something affirming and positive about each other. Okay, baby, go. <laughs> I need to do so, that. <laughs> All right. So, all right. So I'll say something about you. Okay. Try not to take up that, all the time. Okay. Right. Cause there's a big list. Okay? <laughs> but I'll say something about you that I deeply value. Okay. So I look at my desk and I've got a piece of paper from, you know, everywhere since, since the Mayflower came over <laughs> and, you know, to, you know, anyway. don't ever look at Matt's desk. I've got papers everywhere. And one of the things that I love about you is that you are so ordered and so methodical and you're such a good administrator. Hmm. Well, it is a me. massive blessing in my life hmm. that you are such a good administrator. Hmm. So that is something that I just admire hmm. and deeply appreciate about you. Well, oh, thank you. So I have also been thinking actually even the last day or two, because um, for those of you who don't know, Matt's dad is on hospice and he Matt's parents lived with us for the last 20 plus years. And, but every morning Matt gets up very early and he goes over and makes his dad coffee and just gets him going for the day. He actually visits him several times a day, but the mornings are always very critical to kind of get his day started out right. And um, I was just thinking about that and how I so appreciate and admire you for your faithfulness to your parents and that um, selfless love that you demonstrate that nobody but me and him know about. And um, it's a beautiful thing. It's a, you're a mm. really good example to me that way. Well, thank you, my love. So now that was something mm. that was from the heart in both cases. Yeah, we didn't actually know what each other was going to say. Just and so genuine. You know. Genuine. Yeah. We didn't know where the other person was going to go with that. Mm-hmm. And again, it's not rocket science. Just pick something and say it. So we thought it might be good to just offer some thoughts uh, relative to 
our kids, relative to your wife, relative to your husband, some words of affirmation that are straightforward, simple, but would give you some idea of where you'd go. Yeah, if you're new to, to say, if you're new to this whole affirmation if thing, if you're new to being purposeful, like this would have been me about speaking affirmation mm -hmm. and just filling that other person with the spirit of, of lightness and these powerful words, uh, uplifting words. So, Okay, like to your kids, you can say just something as simple as, I think you're fantastic. Or, you did a great job. Thanks for being such a wonderful kid. I like you. You make me smile. I sure appreciate the young man or woman you're becoming. You see... That isn't something that took, you know, four years of graduate or, or <laughs> right. college and then two years of graduate school. Right. Th that was just something that is from life, from the day, and from the heart. And yet, our, those, are, those simple things mm -hmm. are so easily passed over. Yeah. And your kid wants to hear them, needs to hear them. So just thought we'd offer a couple of examples there. And uh, you probably, even listening, can think of 20 more that mm -hmm. you could speak into the life of your own kid. Now, for uh, the husbands, here are some things that you could just speak into the heart of your wife. Just a few phrases here that that you can, you know, well, hopefully will spark your imagination and thoughts about how you can speak life and, uh, and healing into your wife's heart. Mm -hmm. So how about this? Hey, babe, you give a lot, and I appreciate how much you give every day. Hmm. How about these? This, take your wife by the shoulders, look into her eyes and say, you are beautiful. Hmm. Yeah. How about this? You make me want to be a better man. Wow. Thanks for your faithfulness to our family. Hmm. Every wife gives and gives and mother gives and gives. Thanks for your faithfulness to our family. And how about, I've learned a lot from you. Because the fact of the matter is, is every last husband out there, if he's paying attention, has learned a great deal from this wonderful resource, this blessing that God gave him mm -hmm. to, to be his help meet as the, is, is, is put in the Bible, mm -hmm. to be with him and to walk with him in life. I've learned a lot from you, babe. And I'm saying that to my wife right across mm -hmm. the table here. And it's so true. So those are just some ideas that you can say to your own wife mm -hmm. and or your own wives. And so take the opportunity. Don't let the day pass today without speaking a word of affirmation into the heart of your wife. Okay. And here's some examples of some things you can say to your husband. If you're a wife, you could say something like, thanks for being such a loving husband. Something that's a, a simple thing, but isn't it true? Or you can say, Hey, I'm sure glad you're my friend. Another one is you are a great dad or you're going to be a great dad if you're expecting. Um, here's another one that's, it's so easy to take it for granted, but thanks so much for fixing that. Thanks for taking care of that for me. I love it when you do that and appreciate you. And the last one is just, I just think you're a really smart man and I love seeing how your mind works. So awesome. Just examples. Simple, powerful. That you can employ in your own marriage and relationship. So, Proverbs 16, 24 says, pleasant words are as a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bones. Now, we know something about honeycombs. I'm a beekeeper and I okay, don't have bees right now, but I, <laughs> but for years okay, honey, I was a can, beekeeper. I'm going to interrupt you. I'm uh -oh, sorry. You're not going to tell the, like, <laughs> all right. Okay. I got a are, carried away, just a slightly there, carried away. Okay. There are some year. things I feel like you should know about Matt before we get any farther in this. Um. What the principle of life I live by, if some <laughs> is good, more is better. Okay. So if you stick with us at any length of time, you're going to see this running theme and, and you're going to have a lot <clears> more sympathy for me. <laughs> so everybody enjoyed the honey. Let's just be okay. Honest. So many years ago, Matt was interested in beekeeping and was kind of looking into it and it ended up getting to, he went over, drove over to the valley, picked up two beehives and a book on uh, keeping bees. It was, mm -hmm. uh, I think, beekeeping for dummies, hey, literally. I knew what I didn't know. <laughs> and he drove home. He said, okay, got two beehives in my book and I'm going to keep bees. And he um, ended up, well, he took those two beehives and he split them into two more. So there were four 
in case you didn't know how this works. I'm not sure if I still do, but that's the idea apparently. <laughs> And you went and got the the big bee suit, so the full out, like kind of like you see in the movies. With well, the... actually, I didn't want to get stung, and so I went in and I said, "I want the bee suit that answers all the questions." <laughs> and the guy says, "Oh, well, you want this one right over here. You this is rated this for African killer bees." <laughs> Not uh, that's a true story. It, it does look like you were in Africa <laughs> for sure. So we, so. Every day would get his suit on and go out there and do his B thing. And then the four became eight. So he split that. So he was out there quite a, he spent quite a bit of time out there. I guess they could take much more care than I realized. And well, anybody um, who keeps bees knows it's actually a very time consuming endeavor. <clears throat> yes. Well, which is something I didn't and know I before we started. Hives, so that took a lot of time. <laughs> okay. And then Matt drives by. There's a prop- eight, eight hives takes <laughs> a lot of time. Okay, he drives by at this property that's not too far from us. And he sees all these beehives on this property, about 400 of them. Literally, I'm not exaggerating, 400 beehives. And he was curious. He's the investigative type. So he made some phone calls, tried to figure out who owned these hives, what they were doing on this property. One thing led to another. And, and eight hives are really time consuming. And the next thing I know, <laughs> there are these <laughs> flatbed trucks coming into our property, dropping off 400 beehives. I, I got a really good deal. <laughs> Okay, um, we only have 10 acres just so you, just to get you the sense. Well, it doesn't take that much space to keep that um, many hives. But Yeah, that, the hives wasn't the problem. It was the bees that was the problem. Mm, okay. Anyway, so um, yeah, that was Matt's little experiment with so. the... We don't have any beehives anymore, just so you know. <laughs> oh, goodness. But, oh. okay, so I think we're losing sight okay, of yeah, sorry. Know, what matters here, not my you know, but, profligate. But at least people will know that we know ways. a little bit about bees and honey. Okay. So, right. But, okay. So, but honeycomb, Mm -hmm. right? So we know what taking honeycomb out of the hive and literally sinking your teeth into the honeycomb. Yeah. It's amazing. And it's like the entire summer is contained in, in, in that one taste. Oh yeah. It's like a little taste of heaven. So good. And frankly, it's probably the only thing that uh, kept me from choking you. With for, your yeah. bare hands? Yeah. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> it was your save. Okay, so there's clearly more to the story because 400 beehives in one person. Trust me, it's a challenge. But anyway, we know what this is about. Hmm. Pleasant words, it says in Proverbs 16.24, pleasant words are as a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bones. And so I was looking at that and I said, well, that's interesting because there are so many valuable health properties of honey so just in terms of yeah yeah no it's it's a it's a it's a superfood for one thing it's a superfood but it says that pleasant words are like that and Mm. they are health to the bones Mm. so you know what that got me to thinking i wonder if medical research has been done on words and health and well you probably know the answer already. So there's this fascinating study that was done by the National Institute of Health, or at least uh, 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 funded by the National Institute of Health and the Joan Butler Ford Stanford Graduate Fellowship, published in the Journal of General Internal Medicine. So we're talking uh, a seriously legit study. And the short uh, version of the story is they literally discovered the power of a doctor's words in the process of Mm. treating several different kinds of of conditions and it just literally proves this the 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 truth of this verse that words are health to the bones health to your body and here we have this study that literally corroborates what the scriptures so many uh millennia or in this case uh what 1500 years ago uh no Sorry, now I'm getting lost in time. 2,100, yeah, 3,500 years ago have said. Mm. And it's fascinating and it's wonderful and no big surprise. The Bible said something that turns out to be medically true as well. Words speak health into your body. You know, that reminds me too that, that you know, sometimes we think of these, you know, speaking these, uh, building up words to our relationship that's already good and just making it better. But it's also very powerful into a relationship that's struggling, that's full of tension. I, I just was listening to another mom today talking about how she spoke, oh, she told her son that she was really proud of him and he was really glad to hear it and, and asked her specifically, well, why? And then she gave him some examples. And then she added the part that I thought was fascinating was the part that she added after that, where she said, 
actually, we were having a really difficult day, he and I. And so this wasn't, this didn't come out of a, a really good day that we were all, you know, soaring and jiving, but it was a day full of tension between him and I, and he had been in a lot of trouble that day. And, but she said, just speaking that, those words at that right moment changed things around mm. and it opened up a conversation and it, and it softened his heart. Mm. And so I think that's another thing to remember that, that even when in trouble or in those hard days, it's still a good day mm. to speak a right and beautiful word. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Absolutely. And you know what? I think there's one category here we might have missed too, because there are many people listening Mm -hmm. and you're adults, right? And uh, we were blessed to learn that uh, some people even have their kids listening along. Yeah. The the reef said they had their kids. That's right. (laughs) I told you have to keep it clean. So I guess I have to watch my mouth here. (laughs) But but many people that are listening Mm -hmm. are adults with aging parents or certainly parents that are older than they are. Hmm. Don't miss the uh, incredible words of life and power and just the uplifting spirit that you can bring into the heart of your parent by telling them something you appreciate about them, Mm -hmm. speaking a word of affirmation to your parents as Mm -hmm. well. So it actually goes both ways. And when you're, when you get a little older in life, I know that young kids don't think in these terms at all and they shouldn't, right? It's the parents speaking these words of affirmation into the heart of a young child. But as you're an adult, as you're getting older, don't miss the opportunity to let your parents know what you feel positively about them, things that they've done, things that you appreciate. You can affirm them in the way that uh, that you can be affirmed as a young person as well. Yeah, even generationally speaking, I was thinking this as well, is that when you pass that on to your kids and you speak this way into their lives, they will follow your example mm-hmm. and they will start speaking that to each other. Mm-hmm. We've overheard. Yeah, absolutely. We've overheard our kids building up one another mm-hmm. in the same way that they've just always known in their memory and saying, "Hey, good job on this" or "Hey, nice, you know, nice work there." And isn't that music to a parent's ears yeah, to hear absolutely. that? And to think that when they have their own kids, they also will be able to pass that on. So it's a mm-hmm. if you've if you have not grown up a home like this and you're discouraged or you feel like it's maybe too late or it's never too late. And it's always a good time to, mm-hmm. to change the culture, the atmosphere of your home into one that speaks positive building upwards. Yeah, absolutely. So what do we have? We have today, right? Mm-hmm. It's now. Don't let this day pass without taking the opportunity to speak a word of positive affirmation in your child, in your husband, in your wife, in your parents. Mm -hmm. Take the opportunity to speak affirmation into their lives. And so don't miss the opportunity. God put these people in your lives. They're the most important relationships you're going to have this side of heaven. Mm -hmm. So don't miss the opportunity to speak life into the people that you were doing life with. Yeah. The people that you love deeply. So, all right. Well, hey, That's our uh, conversation on the subject of affirmation. So what are today's takeaways? Well, first of all, my words are powerful, that I have the ability, the power to speak life into my home. Awesome. And scripture teaches us to be careful about what we say, because that power can be used positively or negatively. So I'm not a victim of what I say. I'm in charge of what I say. Scripture says, be careful about what I say. And each and every day, look for those little moments to speak encouragement into my spouse, into my kids. And make sure that when you speak those things, you're doing it genuinely, doing it from the heart. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. We really enjoy these conversations and we appreciate all your feedback and If you do have a chance, if you would be willing to leave a review, it helps us a lot, as we've said before, and share it with a friend, put it on social media, just help us get the word out. We'd be grateful for that. So thank you. It's been a great conversation. Thank you so much for being with us today. And remember, our God is our rock and our redeemer. He already knows what your week holds. He knows what you're facing. He loves you and is for you. So draw near to God and he will draw near to you. 